Hello. Today we're going to be looking at some mathematical patterns that are within music. It's not so much physics as it is just mathematical patterns, okay? Because the patterns are really man-made patterns. They're really not based on physical laws so much. Okay. So now, one of the things uh, we're going to use the word pitch and frequency interchangeably, interchangeably so that uh, a note that is a higher pitch note simply means it has a higher frequency, lower pitch, lower frequency. Higher pitch would have a smaller wavelength and a lower pitch would have a larger wavelength since the frequency and the wavelength are inverse, uh, inversely related, so that the product of the two still gives you the same speed of the wave. Now, uh, we also remember from harmonics that if you have a wave, the, the harm, next harmonic would be double the frequency, double the frequency. And that's where we start to get into the, the music. So we find that certain notes in our culture, we, we give letters associated to particular notes or certain frequencies. And we know certain ones tend to sound good together. And the two to one ratio, that's a key one, the two to one ratio uh, sounds well together. So here's an example. This is an E, and that was around 330 hertz, as you can see on the tuner. And here's another E about 660 hertz. That's a two to one ratio, and they tend to sound good together. And anything that's a two to one ratio gets the same name. So if you have the, the 330, the 660, those are, those are two to one ratio. If you have something at uh, 250 and 500, that's a two to one ratio, they would have the same name. Okay? Now, different cultures will tend to organize the notes in a slightly different way. So here's the, the way that you are most familiar. Here's a picture of a keyboard, a portion of the keyboard, and each of the white keys has a letter name, um, and you'll notice certain letters repeat, okay? You'll see A, B, C, D, a, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then A starts over again. So any notes that have the same letter their frequencies would be a two to one ratio. Okay, so now on this diagram, the high frequencies frequency gets large over here on the right, and the frequencies are small or low, lower frequencies on the left. So the low notes are on the left, high notes are on the right. Most people especially if you're a musician, you know this quite well, okay? Now, in our particular culture, our scale, we take a two to one ratio. For example, we see a C here and a C here. They're at a two to one ratio, and we subdivide that into 12 parts, okay? And we call each of those parts a half step, a semitone. So if you go from C up to this black key, and then that's one, two, that would be one, one interval up, then two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and then the octave would be the twelfth semitone. Okay, octave, eight notes in our tone, in our scale, a major scale, but it is actually twelve semitones, okay, twelve half steps. Okay, now. So in our culture, we take the two to one mar the two to one ratio and we subdivide it into 12 parts. Now we don't just divide by 12. What we actually do to get this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the 12th root of two. The 12th root of two. Now, in different cultures, they might have different scales, or other scales might take the two to one ratio and divide it up into 17 parts or 15 parts. And then you would just take the 15th root of two or the 17th root of two. But with the most common scale that we deal with nowadays, it is uh, 12 semitones. And so we take the 12th root of two. Now, how do we do that? We're gonna do calculations here. How do we do that? So on the calculator, what you simply would do is you're going to raise 2 to the 1 12th power. So if we take 2 and we come over here and we raise it to the 1 12th, 
1 divided by 12. Okay, so 1 divided by 12 is 0 0.08333 repeating, but if we take 2 and raise it to that power, we get 1.059 and a whole bunch more. Okay, what you, key to remember, this is about a 6% increase in frequency. 5.9% increase in frequency. So if you take this number and you store it in our memory, okay, if you remember that 1.059, then what happens is you can you can take that and you can use the um, let me clear my memory. And let's do that again. Let's put that in there. 2 raised to the 1 12th power. I'm going to store that in my memory. Oops. There we go. <clears throat> so now if we take any frequency and multiply by that, That'll take us, give us the frequency of the half step up. If you divide by this number, you'll get a half step down, okay? Now, uh, for example, a lot of you, if you go to an orchestra or play in the orchestra, they often tune at 440. So middle A is typically 440 hertz. So if you would like to know what the, the half step above that is, you simply would multiply that by the 1.059 and then 466 would be the half step above that. If you want to go another half step above that, you simply multiply that by the 1.059 and you would get the 493.88 or 494. The half step above that would be the 523 half step above that would be 554 and you can simply keep going up if you want to go a half step down you divide by the 1.059 and this will take us back to where we were and eventually we'll get back down to 440 if we do this 12 times there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. We get to exactly one half of what we started with. Half of 440 is 220. Okay, so it's that simply that ratio dividing that out. Okay, so now. We have our, our various notes here, and so now we can calculate what the particular frequency is of any note simply by using the 1.059 or the 12th root of 2. And that's the key uh, if you try to make a musical instrument that's going to work well with our musical system. What you simply have to do is take the 12th root of 2 and multiply your frequency by that and it'll take you out. Now, to get a to get a major scale, which is one of the types of scales we might use, uh, what you do to find these notes, for example, take a look here, start with the C, a major scale does, the first note is what we might call our root, okay, and then the next, um, the next note is going to be two half steps or a whole step, okay, to get to our second note. So here's our first note in our major scale, our second note. Our third note is another whole step or two half steps. But our fourth note is simply a half step up and then a whole step and then a whole step and then a whole step. And then there is a half step here for our eighth note. That would be our, our major scale. Now, some of you may be familiar with chords. And if you were to actually calculate the frequencies and say, oh, if, you know, if I had this was at 250, let's say uh, my C was at, uh, let's say, 262. Okay. And then you, you calculate 
multiply by 1.059, then multiply 1 by 1.059 again, and continue on. Uh, when you get here, you will get the E would be at about 330. And then the G would be at about 392. And up here, we're going to get about 523. So we'll notice we get, and I'm rounding on these numbers, and so we'll get a 2 to 1 ratio is the octave. But then there's these other notes that form the major uh, chord. And what we get is this 330 is actually 5 fourths of our root. And then we get the, the G is 3 halves times that. So they're small whole number ratios. The frequencies that are small whole number ratios tend to sound good with each other. Okay. Now, so these are just some of the patterns, and later I'm going to ask you to uh, make a musical instrument, and we're going to do that, you make a musical instrument that fits well within the musical system that most of us use. Hope this helps.